All right, our last video is on what we call rationalizing the denominator. And the reason we need to rationalize the denominator is because it's not proper in math to have a radical in the denominator. This right here, 4 over the square root of 2, is not considered simplified in the mathematical world. So we need to make sure that any time we get an answer, which this is probably going to be the most popular um, aspect of radicals that we get in chapter 7, that if you end up with a radical in the denominator, you have to clear out that radical, which is called rationalizing the denominator. If you realize um, some hint that you want to realize that any radical by itself, for example, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is going to give you the square root of 4, which is 2, and so on. So the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 equals square root of 25, and then that perfect square gives you 5. So obviously, if I take the square root of x times the square root of x, sorry, that just keeps coming up, gives me square root of x squared, which is x. So if I need to get this radical out of the denominator, I can simply multiply that radical by itself, multiplying down here by the square root of 2, giving me the square root of 4, which ends up in a 2. And I don't want to put the square root of 4 in my answer. I want to make sure that I don't have a radical. But whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you must do to the top. So your top becomes 4, the square root of 2. Whenever you multiply a number outside a radical, um, you don't, it does not go inside the radical, so it stays out. And then lastly, you would check the two numbers that are outside the radical, the 4 and 2, and simplify them. So they would become 2 root 2. And that would be our final answer. Let's look at this one. There's a few ways, so square root of 3 over square root of 8, and there's a few ways we could solve this. You could look at this right away and say, wait a second, I know that 8 can simplify. Some people aren't going to do that. They're going to realize that they just see a radical right away, so they're going to multiply by the square root of 8, and the square root of 8 gives you 8. But whatever you do down there, you must do up here, and now they're both in the radical, so that would give you 24, and that's a good answer. But again, just like a fraction, this is not simplified because 24 does break down. So it does break down to 6 and 4. Pair of 2's, 6 goes to 3 and 2, which is does not break down. So it's 2, the square root of 6, over 8. And then I'd realize that the 2 and 8 need to be simplified. So it's the square root of 6 over 4. Another way you could have done this, if I went back to the original, is to say the square root of 8 breaks down. So I'd get this, I would get square root of 8 is 4 and 2, 2 and 2. So it would be 2 the square root of 2 on the bottom. And that kind of brings me up my next example, but if you have a number and a radical, you can leave the number in the bottom. This doesn't have to get out of the bottom, only the radical does. So I'm just going to multiply by the radical giving me the square root of 4, which is 2. And then because of this 2, it's 2 times 2, which is 4, over the square root. Now I need to multiply this by the square root, giving me the square root of 6. So either way would have been fine. Anytime you can simplify a radical over radical, for example, if you had the square root of 24 over the square root of 6, if you can simplify that, the 24 over 6 simplifies, you can make that the square root of 4, 24 divided by 6, which is 2. You don't have to start multiplying by the square root of 6. So just try to observe your um, problem first. So that brings me to this example. So if you want to um, go ahead and write that down, and then we can try it. So pause the video, try it yourself. This is, like I said, the most important part of Chapter 7, probably the most use we're going to see in radicals. So what I'm going to do is multiply by just the radical to get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply by root 3, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So the top becomes 21, 
and the bottom square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, but I'm not going to write that. I'm going to make it a 3, and because there's a 2 here, 2 times 3 is 6. I would then want to check, can 21 break down? No, 21 can't because 7 and 3 are both prime, so my answer is the square root of 21 over 6. And again, that's a pretty popular problem for Chapter 7, and then this might be um, another problem that we might come to. Oops, sorry. We already did that exact one. So here's one that we didn't do. Sorry. So 3 over 2 root 6. So I'm going to just multiply by square root of 6. I'm going to multiply the square root of 6 up top. On the bottom, this is going to give me a 6. I'm going to bring down the 2. 2 times three, uh, 6 is 12. On the top, I have 3 not in the radical, 6 in the radical. That's going to be 3 the square root of 6 over 12, which is going to leave me with 1 fourth or the square root of 6 over 4. All right. Um, from this, you should be able to complete the practice worksheet. And I want to remind you that the answers to the practice worksheet are on the back so that um, you can check your answers as you go along. All right. Thanks.